Welcome to Quantaloop 2. Um, if this is your first Quantaloop tutorial video, please go back and watch the Quantaloop 1 tutorial videos first uh, because the same thing still apply to Quantaloop 2. Here we're going to discuss just the changes to Quantaloop in version 2. Now the first thing we see, obviously we have four tracks now uh, and the UI had to change because of that. So we cleaned up the UI, we gave every track its like dedicated panel with edit control and uh, pan and volume directly on the display. Um, additionally, we have a row of buttons here, which we'll discuss later on. Basically for effects, uh, stop, start, rhythm, and the R mode. And we'll see that we now have two customizers, more buttons. Sorry, let me delete that uh, over here. Uh, where we can assign some more actions right now. Now, ideally for Quantum Loop 2, you would need a controller with, well, six to eight buttons in an ideal case because uh, there's four tracks, then you have a stop, a rhythm, an R mode, and maybe an effect. But if you happen to have just a controller like a blue board with four buttons, then you don't have to reconfigure all the time. You can easily, just from here, change the functions of two buttons uh, at least. So uh, what's new uh, besides the four tracks? Well, in the uh, tempo menu now, we can sync to not just the host, but also to any vid uh, like MIDI source. Uh, so we can now, like we already could send the clock to other MIDI devices, but now we can also slave to a device. Uh, and additionally, we can respond to the start stop of a MIDI device or MIDI app. So for instance, you could have your uh, drum machine uh, running and as soon as you start the drums, quantum loops will start playing or recording as well and obviously the Ableton link and everything is still there. Um, the first thing I will really want to discuss is the new sync mode. Um, we had the free sync mode where like everything like freely floats, uh, the sync mode and the serial mode, and we saw that basically in the previous uh, tutorials already. Now we have new serial master mode, we'll select that here. By the way, I'll use the uh, music from the uh, demo video here. Uh, to illustrate, um, but basically in serial master mode, the first track acts as a master track, which can synchronize to either track one, sorry, to track two, three, or track four. So they can run at the same time. However, track two, three, and four are serial. So only one can play at a time. Now the advantage here is that I can run a chorus, a first and a bridge, for instance, while a rhythm remains running in track one. So let's just try something. Um, so let's start, sorry, let me uh, change the tempo a little of that one and let's change the volume a little on that one as well. So we have track one and the rhythm going basically here. And uh, if I now press track two, they will just run perfectly in sync. But as soon as now would switch to track four to record or to track three. Basically, it only plays track three. If I now press track two again, it will line that one up and that will start playing. Or I can record something on track four. And when we now basically uh, hit track three, we'll see it switch to track three. So basically this is a way of keeping a, um, a rhythm going uh, while you're switching between chorus, verse, or bridge. Now this is my favorite mode because these two tracks, or well, these two tracks, whatever you prefer, they can still run in sync. So I'm a guitar player, I usually use only two tracks. So I can do synchronous recording, but I can also do a serial mode in the same uh, setting. But basically we have three input effects and by holding one of the buttons we can assign an effect. We now see that we have voice rack effects assigned here. Uh, we can assign for instance bias or amplitude here as an amplifier, so as an amp sim directly from within Quantiloop. We'll leave it to voice rack effects right here and uh, we'll switch that on actually. You'll actually hear now that my voice changed slightly. Um, let's
let's see where we set. We set it to hard tune with some echo. Let's reduce the echo a little. Let's go back to Quantiloop. So let's play the music. Quanti loop is for you If looping is what you do Quanti loop is for you If looping is So basically, uh, let's switch the effect off. So basically what you see is like we recorded the effect uh, into the track and like it now just plays along with everything else uh, and even my bad voice sort of sounded okay now uh, by uh, uh, like adding some hard tune to it but anyways that's the idea you can add an effect there these were this was an interrupt audio effect uh, let's actually use this one that we can transpose all of our voice here and uh, we can propose it down as well. Or we can add some reverb. And obviously we can set the settings here. Uh, and obviously this would be recorded, recorded into your track. So let's get to a normal voice again. Again, you can assign up to three effects. All effects will run simultaneously and they are MIDI controllable or like from one of the buttons I could assign, for instance, the effect here to this button. Um, output effects, very similar. Um, we have those on the right side. Again, three effects. By holding the button, we can assign an effect. Here we have, have it set to tape stop. We can adjust some parameters. Uh, let's put it to two seconds right now. And let's actually start the music again. Let's get rid of my voice. And if we now enable the tape stop effect and press stop, we get a nice tape stop effect. And obviously this also works when I start again. It's for you. And let's stop again. So um, it applies to the start, it applies to the stop, and obviously like, uh, well I can disable it again. Let's see, um, let's do the same thing with the fade now. Uh, let's take the fade effect here. Uh, again, when we click this, uh, we can assign a fade out time. And now, like when we would start playing, it would actually slowly fade this in. And you can even see this on the display. The nice thing is that uh, this obviously works per track. So on any stop or start, it would actually fade out or in. And fade it back in. And fade it all out. So uh, let's look at some more effects. Uh, obviously, we can also assign interrupt audio effects here. Uh, so let's actually take Tornado here, and uh, I don't know what I've got it set to, but let's play uh, this again. Let's actually go to Tornado here. And let's get back to Quantum Loop. So basically, uh, you can assign any effect there. Uh, now, the cool effect here is the transpose. We assign that here to the next button, uh, but you can assign it to any button that you want. Uh, that's, uh, and well, let's try to transpose first. Uh, and let's assume now that you're playing your song. It's hard to press this uh, from my angle here. So let's, uh, let's say we want to transpose three semitones up. And again, we can also choose if we want to apply that to all the tracks, so just one track. We want to apply it to all tracks. And let's play the music again. So uh, let's. So now, if I want to introduce a key change at some point, then I can basically hit the transpose button. And let's stop this again. So basically, uh, this is. Even for guitar players, uh, like this is a great effect because you're playing your song and like at some point you wanted to introduce a key change uh, without recreating your loops, obviously. Uh, we already discussed the fade. Uh, we have a reverb delay, compressor, and then obviously the reverse effect. 
let's assign this actually to just one track. We'll assign this to the melody track here, track three. So let's start playing again. Uh, let's play everything, yes. And you see now when I apply the reverse effect, this just the track that I assigned it to will play in reverse and I can switch that off again. So let's press it up. So let's get to the R mode button, uh, the button here in the middle. Um, honestly, I think that's the most important feature here. It's just a single button, but that's just my uh, humble opinion. It was inspired by Ed Sheeran, who seems to employ something similar on his uh, home-built uh, looping pedal. Uh, but the onboard button reduces tap dancing a lot, and it's especially for uh, live loopers, I think, a great enhancement. But you'll have to get used to it slightly, but let me try to explain this, uh, how it works. So let's first briefly go into the phrase settings and uh, I just want to look at the dub after record because the R mode solves something there. So if we switch this to the default, which means play after record, if I would record something and then press the button again, it will start playing what I and just recorded. Now I can also change that setting to do dub after record, then I will start dubbing. And then it will start playing. And then now, uh, the problem with this is that you have to choose before in your phrase settings once globally what you want to do. And sometimes you want to choose on the fly to either dub, right, straight away after record or play after record. And with some tap dancing, obviously, you can undo the dub or you can start the dub very fast. Uh, but there is an easier way and that's where our mode comes in. So I'll leave this setting to dub after record. By the way, this is not required to use the R mode, but it's my recommended setup. So leave it to dub after record. So again, let's record something. Let's press again, now it will dub. Let's press again, now it will dub. And yep. now it will uh, play and then it, like I just deleted it. So instead of pressing this button again to dub, I can press R mode and R mode will actually ensure that it starts playing right away. So it's sort of like disabled dub. So let's do this. We record and when I press R mode and now, when I now it will start playing right away instead of dubbing. So it allows me to choose. I either press the button itself to start dubbing or I press R mode and it starts playing. And basically the rule here is whenever you want to start playing, you press R mode instead of uh, one of the track buttons. Um, so while you're, for instance, recording your setup, in general what you'll do, you'll first record something, you overdub, you record another track, and then once you're done, you hit R mode, and then basically everything just plays. Because additionally, besides starting playing, it also disables dubbing. So we'll leave R mode right now on. Let's play actually everything. I'll get into this later, what I'm doing here. But I was, uh, let's delete this track. Let's get back to a normal tempo, sorry about that. So now when I hit uh, the stop button of one of the, sorry, when I hit the button of one of the tracks, it actually stops right away. Stop that one and bring that, but that one, start that one and stop it again. Stop it all. So basically, I now don't have to double tap to stop the track because I just disabled overdubbing. So there's no overdub actually anymore. So I can basically do a simple stop just with a single tap. And everybody who's done live looping will tell you that uh, the double tap is one of the most annoying actions to perform. Now, obviously, we had a global stop, but sometimes you just want to stop a single track. Now, Obviously, with Quantiloop, you can also set up your MIDI controller to have a dedicated stop button per track, like some hardware loopers have. But that would mean with four tracks, you already need eight buttons just to cover start, stop of your tracks. Now you basically just add one button, which is the R mode, which lets you choose. So basically, the setup is again, record, overdub, record, and as soon as you want to start playing, hit R mode. And then as of that moment, these buttons will just start stop the track instead of doing any overdubbing. However, when it's now playing, let's start this, and I want to record something if I hit an empty track.
it will just actually start recording uh, because it knows that this is an empty track so it just disabled R mode for us and started recording. If you want to overdub again obviously you would have to manually disable the R mode. So let's uh, start everything again to get into the third uh, feature of the R mode. So let's start it. So now let's stop one of the tracks. So now only have track two one, and one and the rhythm running and I press stop. So now you'll actually see that in R mode, let's switch it off, you don't see it there. So in R mode actually LCDs light up and these were the tracks that were playing when I hit stop. So now when I do a start, it will actually start just those tracks and not all. So like when I start, so track three actually remains stopped. Or after a full stop, I can say I want to rearm. So I unarm that one, I arm that one, and now track two, three, and the rhythm will uh, start and stop. So basically it allows you from a full stop to choose what you're going to bring back. You can even start recording from a full stop with some other tracks. So let's say we want to keep the rhythm, we want to keep track two, and uh, we want to record on track four. Now when I hit start stop, it will record and play at the same time. So basically you can start a recording from a dead stop uh, with other tracks running and it's all up to you uh, to choose which one should come back. Obviously in R mode these buttons don't start recording anymore so you have to hit the stop start. But again you disable it and you go back to normal mode. The last thing that I want to discuss is not really Quantiloop 2 specific but it's more related to um, input output routing which is more general iOS, but we do get a lot of questions on this. Um, so uh, Quantiloop by default will record from input one and two uh, of your audio interface and go to output one and two of your audio interface. Now, if you have a multi-channel device, you probably want to route your inputs in a different way. Now, the way to do that is uh, by using a tool like AudioBus, or I'm using ARM in this case, uh, but it's, like all up to your own preference, or you can use any DAW actually. Uh, so in this case, you'll actually see that I route uh, some inputs. I have, for instance, here bias going into input A. I also have my keyboard going into input A and a virtual instrument into, sorry, it's not an input, it's a mix bus A. And then at some point you'll see that we have a setting where we route the mix bus into Quantiloop and then to C and then C goes uh, to our output. Now this is quite a complex setup, uh, but it, it shows you what's possible. You can basically route anything, uh, but you would need an external tool like AudioBus uh, or ARM to do this. And if you want to do, for instance, uh, just route the rhythm, you can choose Quantiloop here and um, we can just select track one or rhythm and you can like route for instance your metronome or your rhythm uh, to a separate output that way. Uh, now the reason why I'm showing this is one uh, to help you out. Second uh, in Quantiloop version 2.1 just as a sneak preview all this is not needed anymore. Full input output routing will be provided inside Quantiloop so you'll be able to uh, route your virtual instruments or your physical interfaces straight uh, into Quantiloop from the app itself. Um, that covers it actually for this tutorial. So I hope you liked it and I hope to see you again. Thank you very much.